بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى عليه وصحبه ومن ولا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, This is Brother Michael uh, coming to you from uh, my home here being isolated, self-isolated um, keeping social distance um, I'm here for the Wednesday Ramadan reminder um, we're on day six already if you can believe it subhanallah right Ramadan goes really fast um, we're already on the sixth day. Uh, so for my reminder, I wanted to talk about uh, fasting and taqwa. Because these two things go together. You know, we, we know that actually you develop one from doing the other. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah, He says, Oh, you who believed, fasting has been prescribed for you, just like it was prescribed for those before you, so that you can develop taqwa. And so when we look at fasting, it's a very powerful act of worship that we do. It's actually a really amazing thing when we think about it. Like the entire time we're fasting, like every second that we fast, we're engaged in a formal act of worship for Allah. You know, it's hard to find anything else that we do that can match that good. And right now we're at 15 hours or over 15 hours actually with our fasting. So we're, we're doing engaging in the worship of Allah for over 15 hours a day. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he tells us that Allah says, that fasting is for me and I will reward it. Because the one who observes their fast, they give up their physical intimate desire, their food, their drink for Allah's sake. Fasting is a screen from the hellfire and there are two times of joy for the fasting person. First, when they break their fast and then when they meet their Lord. And the smell of the mouth of the fasting person is better in the sight of Allah than the smell of misk or perfume. And so when we think about the great reward we get for fasting, the amount of good that we're doing while we're fasting, this should lead us to not want to detract from that fasting, to cause us to, to want to avoid anything that would reduce that reward. So we want to spend our time in a fruitful way, in a beneficial way, in other acts of ibadah to multiply the reward, right? We don't want to spend our fasting day sleeping all day. We don't want to spend our day definitely doing things that would have a negative impact on our fasting, doing things Allah doesn't like. Uh, we want to avoid watching things or listening things, uh, listening to things or even talking about things that Allah would not be pleased with. You know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that whoever does not give up false speech and evil actions, Allah is not in need of them leaving their food and their drink. So our fasting is not really complete unless we guard everything uh, about it and develop that taqwa, which is the goal of the fasting. When we fast properly, we build that taqwa up. You know, this and taqwa is a, a constant state of awareness of Allah that affects our behavior, right? So if we have this true taqwa, this true consciousness of Allah, it would cause us to only act and speak in ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be happy with at all times. And Ibn Ashur rahimahullah, he says that taqwa means that you guard yourself from Allah's punishment by making sure you perform the right actions and making sure you avoid the wrong actions. And he says that we have to perform our obligations outwardly and inwardly, right? We have inward obligations like having iman, having tawheed, and we have outward obligations that we uh, make salah, we pay our zakah, we do our fasting. And then we have to avoid our prohibitions both outwardly and inwardly, right? We have things that are haram, that are outward, like we don't steal, we don't harm other people. And then we have things that are haram that are inward, like we don't feel envy towards others, we don't feel hatred or, or resentment towards our brothers and sisters. So we have to have all of those aspects there uh, to have full taqwa. And if we reach this state of having taqwa, there are so many benefits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. He mentions them in several places in the Qur'an. The first benefit is that taqwa can lead to Allah giving us more and more blessings. Allah mentions some people who didn't have taqwa. And He says, If only those people of the cities had believed and had taqwa of Allah, then we would have opened up for them blessings from the heavens and the earth. A second benefit is that it helps us to get Allah's aid when we're in difficult times. 
Because Allah says, whoever has taqwa of Allah, then he will make a way out for him and he will provide for him from where he does not expect. And we're going through difficult times right now. And this verse should be having a bigger impact on us. It should be something that we think about. Or actually, this is part of two verses. But it should reach us that if we have taqwa, Allah will provide a way out for us. And he'll provide for us from a, from a way we never expected. It should give us a lot of hope. And it should motivate us to develop our taqwa. It also gets us to have Allah with us and supporting us. Allah says, Indeed, Allah is with those who have taqwa of him and who are doers of excellence. Right? Muhsaneen. And finally, maybe most importantly, taqwa leads to us entering Jannah. Allah says in Surah Maryam, He says, That is the garden of paradise, which we give as an inheritance to those of our servants who had taqwa of Allah. So taqwa is our goal. And when we know our goal, it helps us perform the acts that reach that goal better. Right? When we know what we're fasting for, when we know what we're working for, it can help us to enhance our fasting and improve our fasting so that we're doing it in a way that Allah SWT is pleased with. Because that's our goal always, right? We want our whole goal as a Muslim, that we live our life in a way that Allah SWT is pleased with. So I ask Allah SWT to accept our fasting, to guide us to fast for Him properly. We ask Allah to make us from the muttaqeen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.